<laughs> to put into the video and uh, the rest of it you just cut. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you open your eyes like wide? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm so tired, I can't even open them now. Actually, I you can forget about this like completely. I already forgot at some point. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> um, okay, I have to start again. For me, peace activism is really basically building up a society uh, which is equal. I didn't expect it. I didn't ex expect 15,000 people every Monday on the streets in the city where I live in demonstrating against refugees. Like, I can't just like be in Dresden studying international relations and not care about the situation in the city. I ne needed to care, so that's when I decided uh, to go into activism. I started studying in Dresden, which is in the east of Germany. And at the time, or there still is, like a racist movement going on called Pegida. And they started doing these demonstrations every Monday and when it began, it, there were maybe like 20,000 people, 15,000 people every Monday. I talked to my flatmate at the time and she knew somebody who started organizing these counter demonstrations in Dresden every Monday just to show, well, not all people do think like that. And we have to create a safe space for people. I don't want to put restrictions on it because every every person can be an activist. Every person can be a peace activist if you want to define yourself as such. And uh, putting these labels on a name, you have to be a certain kind of person. You have to stand for a certain yeah a certain set of values. Of course, we should maybe talk about it, but by limiting it, you also limit people to really get into uh, get into the work. But of course there are restrictions, like being racist is not, I don't think it's a value you can stand for if uh, you want to be a peace activist. I don't think you uh, should stand for a sexist um, system as well, um, but like I also encountered a lot of activists, a lot of sexist activists, like because sexism as well as other structures we just talked about are so, are so basic in our society. They're so hard to tackle, they're so hard to get rid of and I don't even know if we will witness the point where our community, our friends, our like activist circle gets rid of sexist or, or patriarchal or racist uh, structures um, because we are socialized like that. There's this constant struggle of if I hear like sentences or like persons talking in a way I can't agree, uh, I want to talk about it. I want to confront them, like confront not in a violent way, but confront them in what, what they're saying, like questioning. Um, and this is not something I would define as giving up but being uh, an advantage actually. But it's a constant struggle. Yes, I had to give up on my pretty, like, how do you say that, um, straight view and not looking at the side and being comfortable the whole time because I'm white, because I'm a woman raised in Germany. I have a German passport. I was raised in a family with uh, not like we weren't rich or something, but like decent. Uh, so I had quite a decent and easy life. I had to give up on that because I started rethinking, but then it's not giving up on something for me, but it's rather gaining so much more. When I started to really like get politically involved, I also started discussing 
a lot with my dad especially and um, he used for a long time he used words I wouldn't use in or like also my sister they used words I wouldn't ever use in my like <laughs> in my uh, in my language because I think they're discriminatory. I started questioning them. Every time I heard that I started saying well maybe we have to re rethink our language because it starts with language. Like for me it really starts with language. If we don't rethink our language we can't get to a bigger stage of rethinking our society in a whole. So now for example my family doesn't use this expression or these words again, so this was a success. I think it's a success every time you talk to people who might disagree with you, but still you have a good conversation and still you might like plant a little seed. <laughs> it, yeah, it just, like, it, yeah this, this image of seed is maybe like overused, but plant a little seed and plant like a thought inside their head they can rethink of their own because you can't do the work for them you have to let them go kind of and let them do the work for on their, on their own but still you can like push a little and every time i thought i pushed a little and maybe something bigger came out of that it was a success do you think we will ever reach a point in the future that we will not have the need of a day for international peace? Hmm. I would love that, but I don't know. Mm, maybe not in our lifetime, but still we have to think big. Because, <laughs> like, because everything in history was impossible until someone made it possible. And even if we don't witnesses, witness a world where an International Peace Day is not necessary anymore, um, we maybe did some steps towards the direction. Let's see, but let's try also. You don't have to define yourself as activist to still change social structures, but you can if you want and don't hesitate to do so. I would yeah, I would really li love to emphasize that. Like, if you want to be an activist, just be one. It's not, it's not difficult. You just have to start with it.